Where are you from originally? I'm from Conestoga, Pennsylvania. Oh, so okay. just a little bit south of the city. Not far. Not far. No, no, no. <laughs> Pretty homegrown. Good, good. <laughs> what got you into being a police officer? That's got to be the um, key. Oh, it was kind of an interesting road for me. Um, I boxed when I was young and um, then into early adulthood and even boxed professionally for a little bit. Um, and then realizing that that's not going to pay the bills forever, I decided I was going to, I wanted something like that would keep my attention, I guess. Um, so I decided I was going to try out nursing. Um, so I was a nursing assistant for a short period of time, and I thought, well, if I like this, then I'll go and I'll get my RN. And I quickly found out that was when, wasn't what I wanted to do. And this job was always kind of in the back of my head, even just from being a little kid. And so I finally just got to the point where I decided, hey, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to, do, you know, I'm going to do it now. So I, in 2008, that would be when I was hired here. Okay. So, so um, for 10 years, huh? Yeah, about. Almost. So boxing, what got you into boxing? That's cool. Um, I did karate as a kid, and I think it was probably like, you know, every kid my age was like into like, well, maybe not girls, but, <laughs> <laughs> but most people were into like Ninja Turtles and that kind of stuff and like all that. So I started out with karate, and I kind of just pro progressed from that to wanting something a little bit more and a little bit more impact, um, maybe a little bit more realistic. So um, then I, I started to pursue boxing. So I had a lot of fun with it, and it was at a time that there wasn't very many females um, involved. It was me and a couple others, um, so it was really neat to get a chance to box with the boys. <laughs> yeah, it's not a typical route for a female. No, probably not. <laughs> boxing and then police officer. Yeah. What, what was the draw to, to becoming a police officer? Um, the constant change is you don't know what's going to happen every day. Something's, it's, it's different every day, and that's proven to be true um, my entire career. Um, I like dealing with people. I like talking to people, um, just getting to know them. And I wanted, just, just like with a nursing career, policing is kind of the same. You're, you're ultimately, your goal is to, to help out and to contribute to society. And um, I kind of, that was, I guess, probably my ultimate um, goal was to do something that had some sort of contribution to society and I felt that this was yeah. the one that fit me. <laughs> yeah. So community outreach I guess is a really big part of police work too. Yeah. Where, tell me about one instance where you had a big positive effect. Um, there's a lot of times it's just really small things. Okay. Um, for example, we had taken a, I, I took a, I think it was a theft report or a vandalism report um, from a lady over on the east side of town. And we talked to them about some problems in the neighborhood and, and just got a, she, she happened to mention, I believe, that she was going away on vacation or taking a couple of days off. So here in the next week, I drove past and I noticed she had a package sitting out front. And I thought, well, that package is not going to last sitting out front there. <laughs> so, you know, I just got out and moved it around, around back to a less conspicuous place and left, left her a note in her box, you know, in the little sliding mailbox that, you know, hey, your package is around back. And so that had a really positive impact on her. I mean, she sent me a nice letter and, and all that, which was great for me. But it's, I think it's small things like that. Um, a couple years ago maybe two, two summers ago. It was a really hot day, and um, the guy I was riding with and I decided to go to Turkey Hill, and we got a couple um, jugs of, like, fruit punch or soda or whatever and took it to um, Six Ward Park. Okay. Um, and just because the kids are out there playing basketball, and they're, like, having fun all day, and they're sweating their butts off. Yeah. And I thought, you know what, that you know, that'd be something cool to do. And it didn't, out of my pockets, it's only a couple bucks, but hopefully, even if it's only one kid that sees that and, and realize, remembers, hey, this police officer did this for me, I think that's imp an important, you know, lasting, potentially lasting effect yeah. on the little kid. Is there a specific area of the city you cover? I work the Northeast. Because of the size of the city, you really end up everywhere. Um, your main focus for like proactive police work and, and reaching out and whatnot would, would be your sector in which you work. Okay. But when somebody 
is calling a, a burglary in the southwest. It doesn't matter that I work in the northeast. I'm going to go to that. Okay. So we're kind of all working together as a team. What's the craziest call you ever got? We had a call where a, a, we got a, an older lady was on 911 saying, oh, help me, help me, help me. And we went to check her, check her house and check her on her safety. And after searching the house up and down for, we realized this was a message on an answering machine that she had recorded on the answering machine. Oh, um, wow. So, like, she didn't, it was, must have been, like, one of those mistakes where she was calling somebody on the phone or what. But it, it's one of those ones where you remember, it's like, what in the world? Yeah, that's what's <laughs> We deal with a lot of um, mental health issues, and so that can bring um, all sorts of different dynamics I'm a, I'm a big fan of the show Cops, and one of my, <laughs> one of my favorite episodes is somebody stabs another person over a, like a bologna sandwich or something like that. <laughs> that you, those sort of things happen. Do they really? <laughs> yeah, they do. Oh, that's crazy. Um, I see you have bands. Tell me about your, your um, band. This is uh, the Thin Blue Line uh, band, um, which is, uh, if you know or not, um, kind of a, a symbol for, for us police and support for police um, for those that aren't, that know officers or have families or just generally are in support. Um, and this one is, uh, in Jesus' name I play. Um, it's just important to me to, to remember um, why I'm doing what, I, what I'm doing. So, okay. so, so faith is that. important, a big part of your life? Absolutely. Where do you go to church or tell me a little bit more? Um, I go locally in, in the Hemfield area. Um, and I belong to a couple Bible studies, and we even have a, a, a small study um, with Lancaster City officers who um, also share our, um, the same faith. Oh, okay. Um, so that's nice to be able to, you, it, it's a really neat dynamic to be able to um, learn more about Jesus with people that also kind of share the same life experience as you, because um, our life experiences, I think, dictate or can dictate how how we look at things and how we perceive things and so it's neat to be able to um do that with somebody else that's kind of like-minded in yeah, many ways that's not something you don't really connect as a police yeah. officer in their faith well it's it's like many things um i think that people look at um a police officer and they don't see really they don't see my face or they just see the, my uniform and my, and my badge and, and my gun and all that. Um, and they forget that they're, you know, people just like anybody else. You know, I have a family. I have kids. I play sports. You know, I got to clean my shower and my toilet just like you do. <laughs> like, you know, like there's just, you know, we're, we're people just like, like everybody else. And I think that's sometimes forgotten. You talked about your uniform, too. It you have to carry a lot of stuff in today's day and age, right? Walk me through some of the stuff. Um, okay, well, I have a tourniquet um, for my preservation of life or the preservation of the life of somebody else that I would come upon a victim. Uh, this, guy, this guy has um, an extra set of cuffs and some gloves in it. Okay. This normally has a flashlight, but we're here on, <laughs> okay. on daylight hours, so <laughs> it doesn't. Obviously, my gun... Um, Three magazines I carry. Um, I have a, a cuffs that my normal set of cuffs that I use around back, uh, taser holster, my radio, um, my pepper spray around back here. Um, so a little clip for a drop leg uh, holster for when I would take my or a drop leg pouch for when I take my rifle out. Um, okay. So another thing that stands out too, you don't see a whole lot of police officers that are inked. Uh, yeah. Tell me about your tattoos. Um, where you get them and why? Uh, I started, well, my dad was a little bit, uh, I would say strict as far as like we didn't even have ears pierced as, okay. as kids. And so when I turned 18, I went out and got a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Said, I'll show him. Um, but I, I, people, many people with tattoos will tell you, you get one and it's kind of addictive. You, you want to get more. So, um, the, I, I started off um, kind of covering up a little bit and just 
I, I like the whole skull idea. Um, so I had a couple sh sugar skulls put on, and this one specifically is um, my sun drill from a few years oh, ago. Okay. So I, that one made it into the mix, and eventually I'd like to kind of fill it all up. Yeah, I go, like the yeah. Go for a full sleeve. Yeah, there? I like the idea of the the mixture of the the skull and the flowers. I don't know. It's like the muscle, and it's the the pretty stuff too. Yeah. So. So the sugar skulls are just. You just like them, or do they do? I like skulls. In, uh, no, I just like the skulls in general. Oh, okay. Like there's different, all different kinds of skulls. <laughs> yeah. So, um, talk to me about growing up in uh, Conestoga. It's a lot different than the city life. So. Um, it sure is. We uh, came into church, um, the church at Duke and Walnut. We actually did a small Bible study there, um, so we would come in for that, and then would go a little further north for boxing. So I'd go in the city you know, up Queen Street and down out Front Street. That, so that was, as growing up, that was the majority of my experience with the city. Um, it was definitely a little bit more of a rural yeah. <laughs> rural scenario um, than, than the city is, so. What's it like to be a woman on the force today? Um, what's it like? In, in a lot of ways, it's just the same as being a guy. Um, you're going to respond to the same calls. You're responsible for the same duties. I carry the same amount of gear. I carry the same amount of weight as I'm walking out. Um, in other ways, it's it's different in that women are generally, you know, smaller. Um, so you've got to be able to hold your own and make up for that size difference somehow. Um, some people that we deal with don't like talking to women. I've had calls where I've gone on, uh, going on, and sometimes it's just a cultural thing where um, myself and a guy will walk in to take the call, and it's, it's my call, so I'll, uh, I step in and I do the talking, and the man of the house won't talk to me. He won't, he'll look at my partner or the guy that's in the house with me, and he'll talk to that guy. And a lot of times, like I said, that's a, that's a cultural thing, um, and so, there's some times where you can kind of sweet talk and work your way in and they, they end up, you know, identifying with you and dealing with you. And there's other times where that, that doesn't work and you've got to know um, when to kind of push a little bit and when to just let it go. Um, for dealing with other women, sometimes it's, it's easier. Okay. Um, sometimes women just can identify with another woman. Another woman. Um, so... Sometimes it makes it easier. Sometimes it makes it more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> um, same thing for men. Sometimes um, a, a man will be more respectful to you because you're a woman, and you know that treating you like he would tr he would treat his mom. You know he's he'll treat you real respectful. Other times okay. they might think they can get one over on you because you're a smaller um, officer and you're going to have a rougher time. So uh, I think you have to be able to, you know, just like a, a male officer, you have to be able to read people. When I was hired, it was just a small handful of us. Um, and in the past couple of years, they've gotten more females hired um, to the point where our locker room's <laughs> exploding. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, we have a, a pretty good handful of um, women now that are really starting to come into their own and... and um, you get trained, and then even once you get out on your own, you take some time to really learn what you're doing and and know what the heck you know what the heck the job's all about. I still don't know what it's all about, and I've been here ten years, um, but they're starting to come into their own. And if you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about the city in a positive <laughs> way, what would it be? Oh boy, that's a tough question. Um, I think it, it just like. Anywhere in the country, that the, I think that how we deal with each other um, would be the biggest change. Okay. Just that we realize that we're all people, we're all part of the human race, um, male, female, you know, color differences, a, a, any kind of differences. We're just we're just all people in the end. And I think if if we as officers realize that and the, the public real, realizes that too. If, they, if we could all see that, I think 
it just the world would just be so much <laughs> so much easier to to live in to such much more peaceful of a place i guess okay. what's your favorite thing about the city my favorite thing um hmm <sighs> oh boy i like the downtown um aspect of it and the and the fact that there's there's a few blocks there where you can there's just so much going on um, so it brings people in that aren't even from the city, mm -hmm. um, which I think is really great. I love that it's, it's big enough where there's a lot going on, but it's small enough that I can ride my bike if I'm on patrol from one end to the other. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I just like that it's, it's a big town, small town feel. It's got a little bit of both. Yeah. So. Do you ride your bike often a lot on patrol? I do. Okay. I recently had an, an accident, so I'm currently off on light duty. But okay. before that, um, I would ride pretty often um, on shift, mostly when I come in during the daytime hours. Normally, I work night shift, so okay. um, more towards the now, day. How's that work? I'm curious. Do you just you get to pick, like, oh, today I'm going to use the bike, or um, uh, it kind of depends on manpower for us, and that's why I say a lot of times that during um, the nighttime hours we won't just because it's not really feasible. If I need to, if something's going on, then I need I need to get from one side to the other. Yeah, I can do it, but it's going to take me like three times as long as in the car. So. There's times where it's not feasible. Um, usually what I try to do is when I come in early, we come in early for hearings sometimes. So when I come in early, I, I'll grab, since I'm kind of like an extra person, I'll grab the bike and, and do some proactive stuff on the bike then. Um, that's kind of how I roll with it. Now we have um, officers that work specifically the downtown area, and many of them work ride bike as, as many months out of the year as they can do it. So. Do you still box? Um, I, I hit the bag. Yeah. <laughs> I hit the bag. Yeah. Um, but Le Leila Ali or you? Who's gonna win it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to place bets on that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> I could hold my own. Okay.